This video is an overview of Autodesk's Flow Graph Engine API and how it works with Bifrost graphs. This video is the first in a series designed to give you an understanding of the API along with practical steps for setting it up and using it. To understand how and why you would use the Flow Graph Engine API, we need to start with simulations in Maya. Suppose you're setting up a fluid or smoke simulation in Maya. If it's a simple simulation, you could just go ahead and create it with an emitter or a deformer. But if you're creating something more complex, you're going to want to use Bifrost. Bifrost is a visual programming environment in Maya that you can use to procedurally build effects like explosions and liquids. Bifrost also has great scattering and instancing tools, so you can also use it to create detailed environments. The primary way to build a Bifrost simulation in Maya is with a Bifrost graph. Bifrost is a node-based system for putting together effects, piece by piece. But when you've got a complex simulation and you want to see what it looks like, you can't just scrub back and forth through it because Bifrost graphs will only compute when moving forward on the time slider, not backwards. That's when you want to cache the simulation. Basically, compute each frame and stash it away so you can scrub it in real time and see what it looks like. That's where flow wedging comes in. With flow wedging, you can send your Bifrost simulation up to the cloud for caching, up to Autodesk Platform Services. The service does all the computing and caching and outputs the cache files. And on top of that, you can submit several versions of your simulation with different parameters changed, and it's really fast and efficient. There are tons of videos out there on how flow wedging works, so I'm not going to get into it too much here. What I am going to talk about is how the Flow Graph Engine API to provide even more features and flexibility when it comes to Bifrost graphs. Next, let's look at the concept of an API. An API, or Application Programming Interface, is a set of rules that allows one application to communicate with another without needing to directly interact with the other program's internal workings or user interface. For example, instead of opening an app to access its data manually, you can use its API to retrieve that data programmatically. In the case of a Bifrost graph, you can export the graph from Maya and cache the simulation in the cloud outside of Maya. We're talking here about the Flow Graph Engine API. Autodesk provides a bunch of APIs through Autodesk Platform Services, but we're just going to focus on this one for this video. Let's start with the Flow Graph Engine API documentation, which you can find with an easy search or by heading to the URL shown on the screen. Click on the Guides button, and you'll get the Developer's Guide for the API. Note that right here, it says that the Flow Graph Engine API lets developers run compute jobs on data that is stored in the cloud. And that's exactly what it does. One way to learn how the API works is to look at one of the samples Autodesk provides as part of the documentation. Let's head over to Code Samples and Blog Posts and look specifically at Code Samples. This gives us links to two samples on GitHub, one for JavaScript and one for Python. The Flow Graph Engine API is a REST API that works with a bunch of different languages, including Python, JavaScript, and C++. Let's take a tour of what Python code looks like for this workflow. This is a sample Python script that uses the Flow Graph Engine API to generate a 3D scene of scattered trees. If you want to follow along with the inspection of the files that we're about to do, you can download the code repository here and unzip it to a folder. I'm going to look at the files in the VS Code app, but you can look at them in any code viewer or even notepad. Looking at the files and the instructions, we see a couple of things. One is that the Python script that makes it all happen is fge underscore addtrees.py. But there's also this other Python script called flowgraphengine.py. In taking a closer look, we see that the first file imports the second one as one of its first commands. The flowgraphengine one handles job submission and management, 
So the FGE Add Trees one can focus on uploading the input, generating the trees, and generating the output. The output is in USD format, Universal Scene Description, a format for 3D scenes that can be imported into just about any 3D application, including Maya and 3ds Max. If we look at the Input Data folder, we see that there's a file called addtrees.json. This JSON file represents a Bifrost graph in text-readable format. It's actually a full representation of this Bifrost graph shown on the GitHub page for the sample. This graph data in the JSON file is the data that the Python script pulls in and submits to the cloud via the API. And this is actually very similar to the way flow wedging works. When you submit a job through flow wedging, the first thing it does is convert the graph to a JSON file, then it submits that up to Autodesk Platform Services. But where you have to open Maya to submit a flow wedging job, with the Flow Graph Engine API, you don't have to open Maya at all to submit a job. The Flow Graph Engine API opens the door to a lot of different applications for Bifrost graphs, such as building a custom user interface for artists to interact with Bifrost without having to open up Maya at all. Check out the next video to learn how to set up and use the Flow Graph Engine API on your PC.